Just recently I uploaded a new song on the M8 called Metro Menace and today I'm going to render the stems of this song. That means the eight tracks are going to have eight discrete audio files that I can put into my door of choice which in this case is going to be Reason and it's very simple. You go to the project page, go to render where my cursor is now and if I press the edit button and this brings this new page up, render audio, you can see from top to bottom song row start, that's where you're going to start the rendering from, so from the beginning of the song in this case. If I move that up uh, through the rows it will start rendering from that row, row 5, but I don't want that obviously, I want it from row 0, the first row of the song. Song row last, that means automatically it's going to go to the very end of the song. I could have it so it renders the song more than once. All the tracks are turned on here, 1 to 8, and the chorus, delay, reverb and limiter are all turned on. The name of the song is Metro Menace, I could change that I suppose, but I'm going to leave it as is. When it comes to the actual render itself, I've got a choice of two things. I can either render a stereo mix, so like a left and right out, or I can do stems, and I'm going to do stems. If I do this, it's going to give me eight separate audio files, WAV files, that I can put into my door. So I'm going to press edit on my M8, and it's now saying it's rendering track one, and it's going to go through the percentages, and obviously I will speed this up on the video so you're not bored stiff while this does this. We're coming up to the end of uh, rendering track 8. We could have cancelled that any time all the way through. Here we go, and the render is completed. And you probably noticed the waveforms of the various tracks at the very top. Having rendered the stems, you've then got to turn your M8 off and remove the SD card. So we'll do that now. So you press and hold on the side here. My index finger, press and hold and it's off. This is very fiddly getting this card out. Get the edge of it, just catch it, then it pops out like that. And notice, by the way, I won't show you this again, but it's upside down. Let's just turn it over so the name's on top. It doesn't go in that way, it goes in so you can't see the, the name that's underneath. And obviously when you push it in, you just push it in and it, and it holds, that's easy. Getting out is quite tricky. Right, then we need this little device which is the USB adapter which you get with the M8. It's got a little cap. Right so which way round does this go? Well this USB adapter has got writing on the top nothing underneath like that. So it goes in obviously in the back here with the writing showing on top. Okay so just push it in. Again use your thumb now and that's in. You see a little bit of it poking out and that is done and then you just push that into your USB either hub or into a USB port on your computer. Okay so now you've plugged your M8 USB adapter either straight into your computer or via a hub and it's showing up on the desktop here. So double click on this, make this full screen. So this is the contents of our M8 SD card and you've got these various folders, bundles, instruments, renders, samples, etc. The one we want is render, so we will click on that and we can see that I've got three songs that I have rendered stems for. And the one we want is Metro Menace. So click on that, brings up another folder stems, click on that and here are our eight tracks as eight WAV files. Now, obviously, they're just labelled by the name of the song, so we're going to do something about that when we get that into our door. There's a couple of ways of auditioning these WAV files. Okay, you could put them straight into the door, uh, and you could click on them and then press the triangle over here, and it would play. But obviously, if there are gaps in the track, I happen to know that track one doesn't start for a while. You're not going to hear anything for a little while until the track actually comes in. So that's not the best way. What I use is a program called Sound Studio. So I'm going to right click this and open with Sound Studio. Right, so we can see that we've got a variety of things here. Okay, so the first thing we're going to hear is this. So that is the clave. And you can see that carries on for quite a while until around about 40 seconds and we're going to get a different sound here. Now that is a macro synth 
plucked sound. And you might be able to hear that there's a bit of delay on that. Later on in the track, we go back to the claves. Interesting to notice on that other sound that is a lot on the left hand side, but very little on the right. So that may be the way I panned it, but you can see it clearly, can't you, on that WAV file. So that is track number one. Let's look at track two. We're going to right click it, open with Sound Studio. Now I've got a couple of sounds here. The first thing we're going to hear is the 909 crash comes in here. And then later on, this goes into our sampled kick, snare and hi-hat. And you can hear clearly that's got the effects on it. It's got the delay on it. Later on, we get the crash again. And then still later on, we go back to that. Kick, snare and hi-hat. So that's track two. Track three. Now here, around about 30 seconds, we've got... That is a hypersynth bass that lasts for this section here. There's a gap and then it comes in again later. This is great, isn't it? Because we've got these eight discrete tracks. We're going to be able to mix them and change them to our heart's content. Track four is also a macro synth. This is a 16th note. This is kind of a tune, I guess. lovely tinkly sound that I've used a lot of delay on and uh, you can see that drops out here and comes back in here such a nice sound that isn't it that's track four it's the only sound on that track what have we got on track five So we've got that lovely sample bass. It sounds a bit like an old DX7 or DX100 bass. Really, really nice bass, isn't it? Thumping sound there. And that's the only sound on this. You can see it comes in again later. You can hear the delay on it, can't you? Obviously, you can solo these tracks on the M8 to listen to them in this way, but it's really nice, isn't it, to be able to see these waveforms. So to track six, again, we've got one sound here. <laughs> That's quite weird, isn't it? That is the chopped up loop, kick drum and snare drum, and it's, it's kind of panning in quite a weird way, isn't it? Track seven, I know, is the shaker. Loads of panning on that. It's done with an LFO. That's the only sound on that track. So that's the shaker. That is a, a sampled shaker. So track eight, the last one. A couple of sounds on this. The first one is the pad, which eventually does that lovely pitch bend down. the end of the next time round we'll get that pitch bend down this is probably my favourite sound out of the whole song this on track 8 is a CZ1 I think that's a Casio synth which I programmed 16th notes into like semi quavers I'm using a table on that instrument as well and obviously lots of delay, really sounds nice. The 
there you can see you've got pretty equal left and right with the volume. Some of the sounds are very heavily in one uh, side of the stereo spectrum. But anyway, those are our eight discrete tracks. The next stage is to put them into a door so we can remix them, add effects and generally have some fun. Okay, so the next stage is to drop these eight WAV files into our door of choice. Now, the one I'm going to use is Reason because I know what I'm doing with this program pretty well. It may not be your choice, but it's going to be much the same with any door that you use. So I've already prepared a file for this. So we're going to open that. So I'm on the sequencer page of Reason. I'm going to grab hold of these eight stems. Just select them all like this. And I should be able to just drag them and drop them into Reason like this. Just doing that. And there they are. They're in. From earlier, I know that there's a horrible noise on this track here. I'm not going to play it because I don't want to burst your eardrums, but I know there's a problem here. For some reason, on this track too, that's the track that's got the crash and the sample kick snare and hi-hat, when it does this process of putting it into the door, there's a weird sound here. It's just going to turn the snap off and I'm just going to drag this track too past that horrible bit. I don't want to burst your eardrums and we'll get rid of that bit there because that's horrible. We don't want that. So if we press play now, we should get all eight tracks playing in our door. that all seems fine. Right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to label these tracks so that we know what we've got. So I'll speed the video up so I don't bore you to death with it, but I'm going to change the names of all these tracks to show what sounds are in them. So those are all labelled now so we know what we're doing. Let's go to the mixer of Reason. What is very strange with Reason is that when you go to the mixer you'll see all these tracks are out of order. So if we look at the mixer and the sequencer at the same time you can see that what was track one, the clay macrosyn plucked, is track two here. Really annoying but it's very easy to reorder them. You just drag them to where you want them so let's just do that. So now these tracks are in the right order. Now it's very important that you have the tempo of your door set to the same as the tempo of the M8 track. So if I go to the sequencer, you can see this is set at 120 beats per minute, which the M8 sequence was set at. So that's good. If you've got any synced delays and things in your door that you want to use, that's going to be important. Otherwise, it's not going to work properly. OK, so what we'll do, we'll just add the tornado effect to the synth bass. Yeah, so Tornado is a really good one to affect separate tracks and indeed the whole track is great for that. So you've got your eight tracks in, you've got them all labelled, you could change all the EQs, all the tones if you like, you could put delay, you could put all kinds of reverbs and phases and things on the, uh, the actual sounds, either the whole track or individually. You could change the relative volumes. Let's see uh, how that works. Let's just do a bit of remixing as we go. Shake it down a bit. Clay down a bit. Okay. Chopped kick and snap. 
down a bit. Track 8 so nice, isn't it? From the up or down. Track 3, the bass, bring it up a bit. Sample bass is nice, bring it up a bit. So it's brilliant. So you can completely remix your M8 track and then master it in Reason and you're good to go. And of course, you can use all the effects that you've got in Reason to mess around with. You can either print those to the track or just you know use them live if you want to play the thing live. The possibilities are endless, but that is recording a song on the M8 and then rendering the stems, putting the stems into a door, remixing, and uh, you know it's very satisfying when you do it anyway i hope you found that interesting obviously try it in your door of choice whether that's reason or logic or fl studio any of those will work fine one thing you might like to do is to put an effect on the master if i just show you that in the mixer here see i've actually put this effectrix 2 on the entire master so that's wired into the entire master so that should affect everything in the track and bring the level down here effectrix is great because you can have all these sequenced effects running at different speeds so i can change this faster it's a bit crazy that or bring it slower Effectrix is a video all in itself, but it's, it is really good. Great effect, that, I love that. that I mean, obviously, if you make it an insert effect, it's much better because you don't have all these different levels to keep turning up. Just great fun. And of course you can do that with any effect at all in Reason. I've got loads here, obviously reverb and phaser and sweeper and oh it's just brilliant. It's it's endless what you can do. So it's been a very long video i'm going to stop there if you found this interesting please give it a like and consider subscribing to my channel thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time